Hi, my name is Karthik and I'm from ExecuteAutomation.com and welcome to part 28 of our C Sharp for Automation testing video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about the C Sharp 7 new feature. And once again, this is Tupus Deconstruction feature of C Sharp 7. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 27 since in that part we discussed about the tuples and now we're going to work with the tuples deconstruction and see how to work with tuple deconstruction. Well, tuple deconstruction is another way to consume tuples to distract them, meaning a distracting declaration of a syntax for splitting the tuples or other values into its parts and assigning those parts individually to a fresh variable. So it is very, very interesting and neat way of working with tuples because whatever value that is returned from the method of a tuple, you can actually assign that to a local variable and then you can work as if you're working with a local variable of that particular class or member of the particular class and then you're performing that operation. Again, if it doesn't really make any sense, we'll quickly see in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to Visual Studio. All right, so this is the same project which we are working from our previous video. And this is the whole project which we are working so far in this course. And now as you can see here, we worked with the tuples where we created a method in the Sharp7 uh, folder under the new features class. And this is the tuple that we did. And we discussed the nameless parameter and the named parameters of the tuples. And we saw how you can work with the nameless parameter of a tuple by accessing the members like item one, item two, and item three. Whereas with the named parameters, you can access that with the name of that particular parameter something like this in here, right? But now let's say if I want to work with the name, age or grade, or maybe I'm gonna give some other name for the variables and I want to distract the return value of this particular tuple and I want to perform some kind of operation there. So it doesn't really make any sense, but while working with a bigger project, it makes it really, really a lot of sense because you can just consider something like this. Let's say if a value being returned from a method has to be verified in some way or other, which has the age of, let's say 40, only then you print this particular value. If the age is 30, don't print this particular value, something like that, right? So if you're gonna perform that operation here, basically you're not really checking anything. You're just printing the particular value. But if you wanna print that particular value, you can do some kind of checkings there. So the destruction or the deconstruction of the tuples can be done using what is called as this. So I'm going to create here something like string of so the return type of the exact tuple. So I'm going to say string of uh, let's say username uh, or maybe student name and uh, integer of his age, maybe student age and then a string of student Great. So I'm actually making the parameter value more meaningful here. And you can see that this particular line is still legal. So whatever is written from the return student info method, I'm just going to assign or distract the value into different variables or otherwise called as local variables. So now if you hover your mouse in here, you can see that it's a local variable of string student grade. And now this particular line is kind of illegal because you don't really have a student info var type, which is something I removed right now, right? And now how to access this particular thing? It's very, very simple. You don't really have to use the variable dot and name, something like that. Now you can just do this, student name. See, so simple it is. I can just say student name, similarly student age, and I can do this student grade, something like this to access the value as if I'm actually working like a variable within this particular class, something like that. Right, so this is the one of the great new feature which is available along with the tuples of C Sharp 7.0 to access a member of the tuple, something like destructing it into uh, different variables and assigning that to the variable values like this. So this is one more way of working with tuples in C Sharp and this is what is called as the destruction or deconstruction of the tuples in C Sharp 7.0. And again, if you're gonna perform some kind of operation here, let's say if you're gonna do something like if the student age 
is equal to uh, let's say 40 only then print this particular value you can do that as well right and you can again do whatever operation that you want so basically it's like a local variable for you to perform the operation so I can feel this is one of the most important feature maybe moving forward this particular tutorial is going to be the future like what the entity framework is actually using the extension method to perform a lot of operation similarly this tuples is going to be the future of c sharp where it's going to leverage the power of tuples by returning multiple values and perform the operation in many different frameworks within dotnet itself so this is what is called as the deconstruction of tuples and once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day